So if you're a beginner on YouTube and you wanna know how to edit YouTube videos, you came to the right place. I get this question a lot, so I decided to do this video about it. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on what software you can use as a beginner so you can quickly edit your videos and easily edit your videos at a low cost so you're not breaking the bank and spending a ton of money on some complicated software. Let's get right into it. The software I'm gonna show you how to use today is called Filmora. It's made by Wondershare, a company that's been making software for years. And you may have heard of Filmora if you've been on YouTube and seen their ads. Uh, it's quickly becoming one of the most popular video editing software apps for beginners on YouTube because it's easy to use and it's affordable. And I wanna show you how to use it today. So click the link in the description below or on the video card on this video. It'll take you directly to Filmora's website where you can download that and install it on your computer. It works for Mac and Windows. So it doesn't matter what system you're on. It does have an option for Mac and PC. So go ahead and download it and install it on your computer. And then depending on your computer's speed and performance, it might take a few minutes to install. And once it's finished installing, click Start Now, and it will open up Filmora for the very first time. And you'll see the home screen to Filmora. Uh, first of all, you wanna select 16 by nine for the widescreen version. You most likely use that. You'll probably never use four by three, so use 16 by nine. The full feature mode is where we want to be. So click on that. Now, the very first thing that you want to do after you've opened up Filmora in the full features mode is click on the buy button up in the top right because if you leave this on the free trial version, you're gonna end up with a big watermark on your video and you don't want that. So what I recommend is buying it now because it's cheap and also because you can get a 30 day money back guarantee if you somehow don't like the software, you can always ask for a refund within 30 days of purchase. And currently right now you can save $20 on a lifetime license if you want to if you decide to get that. That is their best seller on Filmora's website, so you can save $20 and get a lifetime license with free lifetime updates for only 49.99. It's a pretty good deal, so uh, I recommend going ahead and doing that. And once you purchase the software, you will receive a registration code in your email, so copy that registration code and then go back to Filmora, click register, enter your email and your registration code in the box. And now you have a full version of Filmora and you have all the features and you have lifetime updates and you don't have that watermark. All right, now let's go ahead and get started on editing this video. The first step is you want to import your media files. So anything that you're going to add into your video, whether that's video files, picture files, uh, music, audio files, all that stuff, this is where you'll do it. That's the first step and it's in this window right here. So if you just click this button right here or go up here to import and you can hit import media files, it does the same thing and brings up this window where we can browse to your media files that you want to add to your project. So we're going to go to my videos folder and that's where I have my video files saved. Uh, that's after you import them from your camera, wherever you save them at, just browse to that folder and then you can just select all these and hit open. It'll add, it, add the files to your project one by one. And then, so you're, this is just the project files. This doesn't mean that you're gonna have to use all of these files. This is just your working project uh, library right here. So I got my video files. Now I want to add photo. I have a photo that I wanna add to my project. So I'm gonna go back to import, go to my pictures, and I wanna add this microphone icon. Just double click on that. It does the same thing. Opens it, adds it to your project. And finally, I will add my music file for my background music from my music folder. So there it is right there. I will click that, open it. And these are all my project files that I have to work with. Now the next step is to figure out which video files you wanna to add to your main timeline. Down here is your main timeline and this will end up being your video. Uh, you'll add all these different video tracks which I'll show you in this video. So if you go up here, and these are your different files that you've added to your album or your project. You can double click on these and it will preview them over here in the preview pane. Okay, and then you can use these controls here to pause you can go back a frame, you can play again, you can use the scr scrubber to scroll, to scrub across the, the video file. You can also use keyboard shortcuts. So if you go over here and select a, a video and you hit the space bar on your keyboard, it will play it, it will preview it. And so the space bar is the play and pause button on these videos. So if I hit space bar, if I hit it again, it pauses it, play, pause. So get used to using your keyboard shortcuts as often as you can and the space bar will be one of the ones you use the most. So let's start creating our video. Now let's say I want this to be the first shot of the video. I want this to be my opening shot. Well if I select it I can either click and drag it to the timeline and drop it onto the first video main timeline track and it will it will drop it right there and I can hit the play or the space bar to play the video and now it's previewing my video. Or let's say if I want to, 
undo what I just did, hit this undo button right here. There's another way to do it. You can actually just click this plus button and it adds it to your project. This is your timeline, your project timeline right here. And it'll automatically add it to the correct track. So it added it to the, the video track, which is what we want. So, and if you look how my mouse turns into this little double arrow symbol right here, if you do that, if you hover your mouse over the time, timestamps in the video, you can click and drag and zoom in you can zoom in on the timeline to make it longer. So if you need to do some really rough edits really closely, you can zoom in a lot and then start editing the, the video files from there. Or you can just click and drag to the left and zoom back out. So that is a useful tool as well. And then you also will be using the scrubber a lot. So if you hover your mouse over the, the scrubber, you can click and drag and that moves where your pinpoint is. So let's continue editing our video. So the scrubber is at the end of this video file. So whatever I add next, will go to where that scrubber is on the timeline. So it's at the end. So this will be my next video file on my video. So I'll click the plus sign. It'll add it to my project and it added it right there where the scrubber is. Now, if I hit plus sign on this next video file, it's gonna actually go in between these two files because my scrubber is still there. So I wanna move my scrubber to the end and then this will be the next uh, video file in line. I'll hit that plus sign and there it puts it right there at the end. So just make sure you are aware of where your scrubber is. So if you don't wanna worry about where the scrubber is, you can always just do the click and drag method because you can click and drag it and dr pretty much drop it wherever you want. I'll show you with this footage four file. So click, I can drag it and put it on the end or I can put it right there in between these two files or drag it and put it right there. And if I if I release, let's say if I want this to be my second file, I can put it right there in, the, in between the first and second video files and drop it. And it's gonna place it right in between those two video files. Now, what if I wanted to split this video file up? See how it's longer than the others? What if I wanted to split that in two video clips and maybe insert this footage file right in the middle of this clip? So what I, what I first have to do is split this clip into two clips, basically cut it. So I would move my scrubber to where I wanted to cut it at. And then I can do either, I can do right click where the scrubber is and hit split. Okay, and it splits it up into two clips. And I'll undo that. And then another way to do it is, is hit this scissors icon. So it does the same thing. And these controls right here will be the ones that you use the most. And you can also access these controls by right clicking on a video file. And you can see that there are different options. You can delete it, which is delete is the same thing as this trash icon. So if I wanted to delete this, I hit that trash icon, deletes it from our timeline, but it doesn't delete it from our album. Those will always stay there as long as you have added those. It just deletes it from this timeline. So let's say I want to undo that. Click this undo button. So now you have a pretty good idea on how to do the, the main basic foundations of video editing, which is importing your media, then adding, adding them to the timeline, splitting them up, moving them around, stuff like that. Now let's say I wanted to add my music, my background track. Well, I already added it to my product here, but it has a music tab if you want to use that as well. It provides its own music. And so I've already added that to my project, but just so you know, there is a music tab. If you want to use that, uh, it's up to you. But I'll go back to my media tab here and there's my music track right there and I will click and drag that to my first music track. You see this music icon, that's where your music tracks go. And that could either be music or a voiceover. So if you recorded a voiceover, you can add that here too. So that's background music. What about pictures and photos? Well, uh, this microphone icon is the only photo file that I have in my project. So this is the one I'll use. So what if I wanted to put this on top right here somewhere like in the corner in the opening scene. So I would click and drag and put it on the picture timeline. You can see this photo icon, that's the photo track for this timeline. And there it is right there. So it adds it to my video and you can see it has these four uh, bars. Well, actually it's got these dots around the outside edges of this, this photo. So what you can do is you can click and drag on each one of these dots and make it smaller or larger. So I'm gonna make this small, click and drag, and then you can actually drag it when you see the four pointers, the four arrows here, you can drag it to anywhere you want on the video itself. So if I wanted to put it over here in the top left corner, there it is. And then I can actually go in here. Let's say if I wanted to stretch this out and make sure that it shows up all the way to the end of the drone, you can hover your mouse over something in the timeline. And when you see this symbol right here, you can click and drag the edge of it and make it longer or shorter, however you wanna do this. And you can do this with video files and music files all the same. So 
this, I'm gonna drag this to the end right there and let go. So those are the basics of video editing. Now I'm just gonna go over some of the extra features that this offers that you will use sometimes, but not all the times. Because the key to editing a good video is to not make it too cheesy or add too many effects or, or make it look like it's totally amateur. You kinda wanna keep it simple. So if we go to the text credit section, you'll see it has all these text effects and titles and stuff like that. Well, you can go through here and if this fits your video, then by all means, go ahead and add it and if it, if it fits your style. So I'll show you how one works. So let's say we wanna add this title to our video. Let's add it to the project. And when I click the plus sign, it's gonna add it to where my scrubber is. So I don't want it there. Let's move it back to the front and let's prolong it like that. And let's move our scrubber back to where we can see it. So now you can see it over here. So if we click on it, make sure it's selected, and then we double click on it on the video. If you double click on that, you can now edit the title text. So select, we'll say uh, drone, and then you can actually go over here and change the font to other fonts that you have on your computer. Center it on your video. You can see it's got the guidelines there to show you that it's centered and drop it. There you go. That's the basics of adding titles and credits to your video. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that from our video. Hit the trash icon while it's selected, deletes it. And then we'll move on to the filters. And it got some pretty cool filters. Like I said, you don't wanna get too crazy, but um, you know, if it fits your style and your whatever your video is about, then go ahead and by all means do it. For example, here's a focus color. If I wanna add this effect to my video, if you click on it, you can actually preview it. And again, let's hit that space bar to preview it. And it previews that effect on your video, whatever you have selected here. That's pretty cool that they include that. So just go through here. I mean, there's a ton of things that you can do. They can check out. They also have a film more effects store where you can check out more. So the filters is, is cool for effects and the overlays are similar to effects. They're all considered effects in my opinion. So here's the bokeh effect, click on that, hit the space bar to preview it, click and drag and drop it onto wherever you want the, the effect. So we'll put it right there on the one we just tested it out on. And there you go, we have the effect right there. Now we'll move on to elements and these are just fun little things that you can add to your video if it fits your theme. So if you're doing some type of video related to any of these, it's sort of a fun thing to do when you're a beginner to add these to your videos. Let's move on to transitions because this is something that you probably will be using. So how to apply a transition is you select your transition, drag it and you have to drag it in between at the end and beginning of a, of a clip, of two clips, so where they merge. So let's say I want it to take place right here. I will drag and drop it right there. And then let's preview and see what it looks like. So it really just does this dissolve uh, effect there. So that's pretty cool. And last but not least, you have the split screen feature, which I won't be going over, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You can have a split screen in your video and feature two different video files in the same video screen. So really that's a basic overview of all the features on Filmora. And now we'll finally get to the export because this is an important step and I'll show you what it looks like. So if you hit this export button right here, and here is my best recommendation for exporting your video. I always choose MP4. It's just a good compressed format that keeps most of the quality. And then you can choose your resolution. So whatever video resolution that you imported, that's probably what you're most likely going to export as. So if you imported a full 1920 by 1080 HD video and all your video files are that resolution, then you want to export at 1920 by 1080. But if you imported 720p video, then you probably want to change that to uh, 720, so it's 1280 by 720. Just go ahead and it, it will most likely default to whatever footage that you imported, but I always work with full HD video, so I'll change this to 1920 by 1080. And then I'll, also, I'll always choose the best quality. And then the rest of the stuff is pretty, you can leave it as the default, and then you're good to go. You just hit okay, and then click export, and it's gonna export your video file. So the time it will take will depend on how fast and powerful your computer is. And when it's done, click that find target button and it's gonna open the folder where it exported your file. So there it is, there's my final video and I'll give you a little preview right now so you can see what it looks like.
So there you go. That's how to edit YouTube videos using Filmora. It's a great option if you're a beginner on a budget. Again, the link will be in the description below if you want to check that out. Thank you for watching. My name is Andy. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want more YouTube related videos. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next. Thank you again, and I will talk to you in the next video.